And it's definitely a weird, um, like, teaching experience, I think, as, like, a professor who really does, like, understand QM, uh, QM which, you know, who really does understand yeah. it, you know, not that many people truly do. And, you know, the professionals in that field even admit, like, they don't really understand what's actually going on. But to to teach that to like a young physics student who's just getting into it is very hard because you have to introduce these concepts that really make no intuitive sense. And just there's no real like there's no good way to teach it. You just kind of have to be like, this is how this is how things are, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then the more you just play around with it, the more you kind of get used to the math and used to the the behavior of like quantum systems mm -hmm. can i ask yeah. when you guys learned it um was it coming from like a a wave mechanics down kind of perspective or from like a qubit up kind of perspective if, and does um, that question make sense mm, yeah okay. uh so in in first year we had like an intro uh unit very very intro was, that was not <laughs> it was it was definitely more yeah. wave mechanics mm -hmm. um he just we were just presented with like schrodinger's equation and then like some easy problems but then, our, like, going into our actual quantum mechanics, like, dedicated course in second year, it started off with kind of matrix mechanics and then transitioning, like, how do we use those ideas for wave mechanics and then trying to, like, solve problems using both methods and to really just get a grasp of the, the entire, um, like, the what would you call that? The entire, like, spectrum of, of ideas there. Mm -hmm. But it no was also it, it was started and kind of rooted with the uh, wave mechanics because I think it was all dependent on like we were doing like the like we were solving, I believe, the wave equation and stuff like that, you know, so I think it was uh, like that's how it was taught to us in a in a very mathematical way and in a way where it kind of also directly kind of applies the physics, which I kind of like that. Hmm. You know? Yeah, because it feels like there is this dichotomy where most introductions do kind of come from this wave mechanic side where the like the the space that you're dealing with is implicitly a function space with like this implicit mm. l2 metric on top of it and uh it's like this very concrete situation because you can actually think about particle dynamics and make computations and assuming the students are all comfortable enough with like pdes it's like great mm -hmm. but i i almost feel like i might have been given a gift by just like not studying physics during college because i I mean, I came at it from a completely different direction just by like reading right. Susskind's introductions to it, which was very much more like start with a qubit and work your way out there. And from that standpoint, it at least to me, it like jived a lot more. And I think that might be because I'm like comfortable with the math. And so starting from something that's a little bit more general in nature and like, um, you know, you're referencing things like a complex vector space is describing your state. It's kind of easier to nod along and say, OK, in, in principle, that feels like a sufficiently natural construction. Um, mm -hmm. but I, you know, what, what you guys are saying about how you kind of have to just go with these rules that are handed down and like kind of get used to them. I wonder if you do have to like, or if there are other approaches such that it doesn't feel like a pile of random, like this Schrodinger equation, like where does mm -hmm. it actually come from? Like, <laughs> I guess I'll believe yeah. that this is how things go yeah. all the yeah. time. And while <laughs> like, no matter what, there's a little bit of that. There's something where like, if you kind of say, Hey, what, like, what energy really is or the role that it fundamentally serves once we're sitting here in quantum mechanics um, is that it's describing these oscillations over time uh, or that that's like one of the roles that it has. And that's somehow like a lesson that it feels a little bit handed down, but then you can use that to inform like where the math is coming from. And you're like, oh, interesting. So I guess you would expect it to come up with like uh, the imaginary number I sitting next to it. And if you're like comfortable with the matrices of it all and like the analogies between a Hermitian matrix and a real number, and all that which again mm -hmm. it's like a lot of heavy math to like sit on mm -hmm. top of your shoulders but if you're comfortable with that the idea of like what schrodinger's equation looks like um in the more general sense it like kind of feels natural it yeah. it doesn't feel totally thrown out there as long as you're willing to say this is the role that energy serves and when things have higher energy it corresponds to like something whatever that something is oscillating more over time like i don't know i i, I think it might be worth whenever students have this feeling that, oh, I guess there's this pile of stuff that we have to get used to, like each one of those moments is an opportunity for some educator to say, could that have been better motivated? Or mm. what's another way that, maybe not even motivation, but just like showing connections between things such that it doesn't feel like an island off in the conceptual space. Mm -hmm. um, and I do think that 
like the reason why it particularly feels like that when you are learning it in school is because as you said it helps a lot to know the mathematics before going into it and as a student when you're learning the mathematics as you're going into quantum mechanics it kind of feels like you're just lost and you, you don't have a map to refer to mm-hmm. you're just you're on this island and you're like well okay <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, that's I'm discovering it as we go along um like because there's so many layers at which you can understand linear algebra for example and given that that's the language that's being used to discuss all of this stuff like, i think complex vector spaces are hard for anyone to understand real vector spaces yeah. like are hard <laughs> enough but like bringing in complex yeah. and trying to think about what does it mean to have like a complex eigenvalue and all of that like to, to try to be learning that concurrently with the stuff that it's being applied to that has a bunch of other baggage coming with it um like that seems like a tricky problem mm-hmm. but uh it, it feels solvable in some way that you could come up with the right learning trajectory such that people are being introduced to the new linear algebra notion at just the right time that like motivates the physics and then they like learn mm-hmm. a new physics motion at just the right time that it reinforces <laughs> the bit of um, mm-hmm. underlying math but there are yeah, a few things right. i believe like especially or or at least uh, with our quantum mechanics course uh, specifically like there are a few things that just weren't taught in the end, we were, I think, just supposed to kind of understand it because one very specific example was just differential equations in general. So Parker mm. is kind of lucky because he was taking a differential equations course as we were taking the quantum mechanics course. And it was so funny because there were so many times when we were talking and he's like, I saw this like two weeks ago in my differential equations. So I'm like, oh, so you already understand the math. But then there's so many things where I'm basically just kind of looking at what he did and repeating it because I'm not really understanding how the differential equation is working because I haven't learned it yet. You know, Mm. so there are a few things that I just think are disjointed and that just makes the physics so hard when you don't understand the the math. That's what makes it really hard to come at it from the wave equation perspective. It's like if you don't Mm -hmm. already Mm -hmm. have like comfort with partial differential equations, (laughs) then it's destined to be something that like leaves you in the dust yeah exactly out of curiosity like how much did the idea of like matrix exponentiation or operator exponentiation come up in like the qm classes um in in quantum mechanics we we only saw like a couple of problems well and it wasn't like anything super complicated because we were only dealing with like eigenstates like energy eigenstates and so we weren't really like exponentiating the matrices we were kind of just using the properties of eigenstates of the mm-hmm. matrix and which made it a lot easier and you can kind of ignore the details of exponentiating matrices so um it wasn't really taught to us as like oh this is what you should be doing it's just like oh because we're dealing in the framework of eigenstates you can just you can just multiply the eigenvalue and that's it hmm. Yeah, there were a lot of instances when we didn't really have to go too detailed because I think, again, because at the end of the day, this was a second year quantum mechanics course. So, it, I mean, I don't think it was supposed to be too detailed. 